Hi guys, welcome back to more episodes of The X-Files. Unfortunately, we're approaching the end of the original series. Um, this is going to be episode 17. We've got this one and one more, episode 18, I believe. Um, and then we have a two-part finale. Let me just double check that. Yeah, we're 17 and 18 and then 19 and 20 is the final two-parter, which... I don't know how to tackle it. I don't know whether to just do the whole thing as one episode um, or whether to break it up into two. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, that's next week. This is this week and we are on episode 17. So let's carry on and find out what happens. Uh, I'm hoping we get a couple of really good episodes as a build up to the finale. We'll see. I know we've got See, you know, newer X Files to come with season 10 and 11, but it's probably not going to quite feel the same being revisited and reimagined. But how is that sound? Is that wet? That's wet. That's just been done. Uh, that's not a good sign, unless that's red paint. And I don't think it is. I think that's blood. Yeah. Time of death, approximately 2,100 hours from three stab wounds to the abdomen. What are those lacerations on her arms and feet? Predation from rats. Gosh. She was killed someplace else. You Spot think? The dirt killed in coming to her injuries. This is a single woman. Unemployed. That's why no one's ID'd her. You found blood alcohol? Point zero okay. four. This man has killed before. And you know that because? That bruise beneath her ribs. It's from the hilt of a knife. Like I said, obvious. You got something? Quite a lot, actually. We've identified your Jane Doe as Good. Ellen Persick, 28, from Redland, Maryland. You're saying the body John found was the second victim? One says that Rita Shaw was found in a ditch. The woman I found was plastered behind the wall and stabbed yeah. three times. Is that the killer only meant to stab Agent Doggett's victim once. The other wounds were out of anger because he missed. Well, that's a pretty astute observation. <laughs> Amazingly so. Thanks to her medical student. Wow. Uh-oh, we're finding her. Oh my God, how many are we finding? I'm Agent Doggett. This is Agent Reyes. Really? This man's flesh smells of creosote. But his skin is soft. The tear marks at his elbow go from left to right. He was broadsided in a car accident. Mr. CSI, yeah. His hands gripped the wheel so hard, his thumb bone snapped on impact. Because of your analysis, we were able to work up the profile to catch the man who murdered those women. Your killer is in his 40s. A felon recently arrived from out of state. He's killed many people. He's going to keep on killing. Do you know him? <laughs> oh, has this guy been studying this particular killer, which is why he knows so much? Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> Usually means it's them. Oh, they know them. Oh my god, there's like... What? Three, four hundred crime scene photographs there. Yeah, you can't just target every guy in his 40s in a bar. <laughs> I'm Agent Reyes. This is Agent Target. You fit. Recently. Oh, don't put him away so fast. Agent, someone in real. prison. Mr. Regali, you're in town in violation of the terms of your parole back in New York. Right. Call my parole officer. She'll tell you I'm here looking for work. Maybe you remember being at the Bent Oak. Bartender says he saw you there two weeks ago. Same night a woman named Rita Shaw got stabbed in the heart. You like to kill women, Mr. Regali. You may think you can get away with it, but that's not going to happen. I must guess, police, detectives, FBI, especially field agents, the constant paranoia that they've missed something or they're not making a connection. How long have you been standing there? Why are you here? Not long. It's weird. I'm glad you dropped by. Wanted to tell you we this had paid dirt your profile. No arrest yet, but we're building our case. There's another case I'd like you to take a look at. Oh, no. Seven-year-old boy. Rides his bike wow. around the block. His mom's on the porch counting his laps. She goes looking for him. 
Why would Doggett entrust this to him? She finds this bike uh, Just because of his skills. The, the cops search door to door, block to block for two days, nothing, no news at all. I've been over this, I don't know how many times. Why does no one find this dude but crooked? after nine years, there's not a lot to go on. Agent Doggett, that case I helped you with yesterday? Hmm? That is your son's. Come again. It's the same killer. You've got to be kidding me. This guy must be an absolute mass murderer. What is this? Do you want to be a medical student or a detective here? I started collecting them before I came to the FBI. I can see why. What do you do with these? If I sit with them, they tell me things. Hmm. Good then. You should know there's a real good chance you're nuts. Yeah. From a normal standpoint. It's the closest we ever had to a suspect. Oh, uh -huh. He died. Killed in a car crash last year in New Orleans. He took him. He didn't kill him. You worked the organized crime task force, right? Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear of a guy named Nicholas Regali? Yeah, he was uh, a collector. Because we appeared to have a connection. Yeah, reason I believe he was involved. Do you now? Got no evidence. Nothing. But somebody's telling me he's mixed up with the suspect in my son's kidnapping. Tell me to ask around. Pull some still pilot. so raw for him. I'll see what I can find. I think this guy Regali may have been involved in Luke's death. What? Since when? Since I've been talking to Cadet Ace. The day Luke disappeared, he gassed his car up two miles from my house. This is not evidence. Not even close. You're making the evidence fit. Yeah. I understand how much you want to find his killer. It's, it's just this cadet, we know nothing about him. We don't know whether what he's hearing or seeing is real. Kind of throws me when you just show up here. Uh, sorry. It won't happen again. Didn't think we'd ever get to meet her. I need to talk to you, Barb. It's about Luke. But I don't want you coming over here again, bringing all this up. Look, this guy may have been cruising the neighborhood. You could have seen him. Anything? No. For the whole six, seven, eight odd seasons, we had the big thing and the mystery surrounding our main character, Mulder, and his sister. And because Mulder's no longer here, the, the, the writers have come up with a new, a new focus with our new character of Doggy and given us something else that's of a similar nature. With Mulder, it's with his sister. With Doggy, it's with his son. And it's the constant struggle that they have being who they are and the job that they have and what they do for a living knowing they should have always been able to to resolve it and to figure it out and it crucifying their whole outlook and now we've got Doggett experiencing the same as what Mulder went through I know it's different circumstances but it's it's a pinned point between Mulder and dog it that they've put in the series for us to always be able to come back to in something that pains them, that's made them and turned them into the person that they are today. He blames himself. He thinks he failed Luke. In his mind, he can never do enough, never suffer enough for what happened. As you asked, I compared the wounds inflicted on your son with the wounds on these two women. And? And? There are similarities between the trajectory of the wounds and the force with which they were delivered. The killer used different weapons. No proof. He demonstrated no consistent MO and no clear victimology. When you raise concerns about Regali, I looked into the source of these allegations. Uh, a cadet, right? Died in 1978 in a car accident. What? Let me see that. What? Cadet Hayes' real name. Stuart Mims of Mendota, Minnesota. Okay. Last known residence, 
the Dakota County Psychiatric Facility. He was a mental patient? We can also place him in New York City in 1993. Uh, <sighs> mental stew. Watch him be gone. Maybe he knew he was getting close. I thought for a minute then this part was going to be empty. It's just what wasn't what it appeared to be. He knew you were coming. He knew John was just vulnerable enough still to go to him with this for him to continue to push. I remember when they had you banging around in a ten-year-old Impala. <laughs> Got lucky. Perfect. He has another suspect. You came down here to tell me that? Were you in any way involved? In the death of John Doggett's son. Since when do you ask me questions? No. You involved? Of course not. What kind of guy do you think I am? With you, with this, with this whole thing. And if I say no, what are you gonna do? Yeah, what's he got on you? You know, if I'm you, right now I'm thinking, I could pop this guy right here. Who's gonna know it's not self-defense? Anything happens to me, a videotape lands at the Washington Post. He only looks young. Really? It's all in there. How you defrauded the FBI with a false identity in order to gain admittance to the academy. We know that you orchestrated this entire thing in order to get close to Agent Doggett. Who failed to identify Nicholas Regali in that same room yesterday? Because Nicholas Regali did not kill Agent Doggett's son. You did. No. He doesn't yes. appear to be swaying. Yes! I told you before, Agent Doggett. I studied the photos of your son's death. And then you killed Agent Doggett's son. I studied his case obsessively. I watched Agent Doggett. I watched his ex-wife, too. To find the woman's body in the wall. Regali associated with the man who abducted your son. I called you so that you could catch him. I'd like to go back home now. <laughs> to the institution. What a fucking mess. John! Whether it's true, in other words, we're nowhere. No. Again. Again. Well, who well, else? The FBI agent. I'm not here as an FBI agent. I'm here as a father. Whoa. What could that mean? I want to know what happened to my son. Seda was this guy. Businessman. And say this businessman in the course of doing business has to associate with any number of thugs, sickos, perverts. Say this Bob Harvey likes little boys. Say one day Bob Harvey sees a little boy riding a bike and he can't stand it. He grabs the boy. You see what I'm saying, FBI? Yeah, you're using a dead man as an excuse. Sees the businessman's face. The businessman who never did nothing to this little boy. Well. Every problem has got a solution, right? Like a car accident. That's what he's saying. Harvey's your killer, he's your businessman. That's what he's saying. <sighs> no, John, no. What? Uh, and how'd you explain that one? That weren't self-defense, was it? You've got to say goodbye, John, now. You, you, you can't go any further down the line with this. It's quite a sad episode. A happy enough decision for them to be content with. You need to be at peace with it. Can't torture yourself for the rest of your life. That was actually very, very good. Enjoyed that. Okay, so episode 17. Um, unusual. Like that it's, it focused on our, what I class as one of our main characters, of course. 
I know Scott is still the main character, but he has replaced Mulder's position. So, as I was mentioning in commentary, the similarity, similarities, oh my God, similar, you know what I mean, <laughs> I can't say it, <laughs> um, between Mulder and his sister and Doggett and his son, the continued torture for an agent, for a detective, for somebody who deals with this every day, who's trained for it and has never been able to resolve it. And no definitive proof, evidence, every suspect brought in, released. I know it was a bit different from Mulder, but I'm talking more about the psychological trauma that the two of them have gone through with this. Um, so I really enjoyed that episode. I knew there was something seriously off with that cadet from the first scene we had with him in the uh, at, uh, the academy with Scully when they were analysing the body that John had found. He, he was already acting very strange. I was wondering what condition he suffered from. They just gave it as pure and simple as schizophrenia. So, But it shows how easily a parent or whatever... I mean, they don't have to be a parent, but in particular in John's case, how he knew it was the only way he was going to get close to you to be able to give you what he gave you. Because there'd have been no other way. You wouldn't have listened to a crazy person from a mental institute in any other direction. So, um, right. We've got one more episode, guys. Episode 18 coming up before we get to the finale. Um, I'll be back with it in two or three days. I'm looking forward to it. At the same time, I'm also not looking forward to it because it's going to be the last standalone episode. Um, so please join me for that. Don't forget, all episodes are available in full length on Patreon. Just check the links in the description as always. Um, and even though we are approaching the end of the original series, I would still appreciate a quick sub to the channel if you haven't already we do still have another two seasons to go that were made at a later date i will see you for episode 18 next take care Don't.